Good afternoon and thank you for joining our video today. Uh, we're currently at King Salmon Airport in Alaska. If you've been following our uh, flights here, um, we're basically on a round the world adventure and uh, rather than take a long boring direct flight across the Pacific Ocean, I decided to make it a little bit more scenic, more adventurous. I flew up the uh, west coast of uh, Canada into Alaska and landed in Anchorage, took off from Anchorage, landed in Coal Bay. My original intent was to take her off from Coal Bay and land in Dutch Harbor. Unfortunately, Dutch ha Harbor was a, a no-go with we bad weather conditions. We couldn't get in there. So I ended up diverting to uh, St. George Island, which is north of Dutch Harbor, 185 nautical miles north of Dutch Harbor in the middle of Bering Sea. St. George Island's airport is pretty small, so uh, we didn't have the option of taking off with an aircraft capable of getting to Japan. So I had to backtrack a little bit to King Salmon to get to an airport that was large enough to accommodate a larger aircraft. Up until St. George Island, I was flying the A318, through the A318 back to King Salmon, and uh, now we've switched aircraft and we're, we have one that's capable of reaching Japan. That being said, you're looking at the A320neo, um, this is Air, uh, Airbus's newest version of the neo, and uh, comes with the new CFM leap engines and the uh, sharklets on the end of the wing tips. Uh, much more fuel efficient than the original A320 with the CFM56 engines. And it has a slightly longer range, more than enough range to get to Narita International in Japan, which is where we're heading. Uh, Narita International, of course, being the newer airport in Japan, um, we want to land there. Uh, there's another airport in Tokyo called uh, Hadina, and uh, it's the older airport of the two. They're both still in use, but Narita being a little bit closer to us, we go with that one. So with that, we're going to hop in the cockpit here and uh, get our systems up and running, find a flight plan, and get on the go. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit of the A320neo. Uh, basically, it's standard issue Airbus. Airbus doesn't change its cockpits, but among the various variations of the A320 series and they do that on purpose so that they don't have to go through a lengthy training process to transition a pilot from one version to another. Uh, this particular cockpit is uh, not my work it's created by uh, it's a modification actually of a panel that was created by Ken Mitchell and uh, to basically replace the uh, original CRT displays with LCD displays. A uh, couple of modifications I've made. I've added ground proximity warning system, uh, pushback taxi gauge, and a uh, aircraft collision and avoidance system radar. And I've also put the uh, name of the aircraft on the panel. Um, looking around the uh, cockpit views are my own work. Uh, they're standard issue A320. Uh, any member of the A320 family from an A318 up to an A321 would use the exact same cockpit. And uh, this is no exception. I've also created wing views so that you can look down at the engines. These are the CFM Leap engines. And uh, they're turning a little bit and uh, you're probably wondering why given the fact that nothing started up yet. That's just the wind blowing through the fins making them turn. And uh, we do have a fairly brisk wind here in King Salmon today. So these wing views that you see are my work. And uh, you have sitting in front of the aircraft looking back at the engines and then you have this wing view. And sitting in the aft part of the cockpit. Uh, cabin looking forward towards the wings you would see the flaps. Now if you were sitting in a passenger seat and uh, looking at the seat in front of you, this is a view you would have. There's a visual display there where you can watch movies during the flight. You can 
track the plate on GPS, and uh, you also have the option of getting a pilot's eye view of the view ahead, which is kind of neat when you're coming in for landing. You get to see what the pilot is doing and uh, why you're doing it, and view the city and the approach and landing. Very popular among passengers. So that's a basic tour of the aircraft. We're going to get ready to go here and uh, fire things up and get the show on the road. We're going to be taking off at maximum takeoff weight, a full load of fuel, and uh, obviously we want to make sure we have enough fuel to get to where we're going, and we're going to be going a long distance. So, that being said, I'm turning on the uh, fuel tank gen uh, heaters, generators, wing de-icers and PTOTs, strobe light, beacon, Wing light, navigational lights, taxi lights, seatbelt signs, and the APU. Now, on the uh, console, the area that will reside between the pilot and co pilot, I'm going to turn on the navigational radios, the uh, flight management computer. Automatic direction finder and transponder. And I'm going to ignite the engines. And you can see they have come to life. You might have noticed the uh, front of the engine dipped down a little bit when the engine's fired. That's normal. We apply a little bit more thrust on ignition than what they do at idle. And that causes that little dip in the nose. So at this point, uh, we're going to get our clearance for uh, takeoff. King Salmon, ground, Alma Pond, 7401, ready to copy IFR clearance to Nadita. Alma Pond, 7401, is clear to Nadita, airport, test file, fly runway heading, climate maintain, 12,000. Departure frequency is 120.5, squawk 7507. Alma Pond 7401, cleared at Nadita Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climate maintained 12000. Departure on 120.5, squawk 7507. Alma Pond 7401, reback is correct. Contact ground on 121.9, when ready to taxi. King Salmon Ground, Alma Pond 7401, with Romeo, ready to taxi IFR. Alma Pond 7401, Hold short of runway 11 via taxiway Delta Charlie, runway 18 November, Mike. Contact tower on 118.3 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 11 via taxiway Delta Charlie, runway 18 November, Mike. Alma Pond 7401. Okay, now that we got the formalities out of the way, we got our. Uh Flight plan cleared, and we got uh, instructions to get to the runway. In this particular flight, I'm going to be using the uh, pushback gauge that I've installed. And the reason for that is uh, we have an 11 knot wind uh, blowing at 100 degrees, and uh, sometimes, if you're not careful, uh, you can end up with the tailwind pushing the aircraft faster than you actually want to go. So I'm just going to set up a pushback gauge here. We want a, a turn at the end of the push at about uh, 80 degrees to our current heading. And we want to push back for about uh, 20 seconds. So with that, we'll request pushback. Ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Ready for pushback. Okay, steering pin inserted, release brakes. Brakes released. Okay, push them back. Now the aircraft itself doesn't have the ability to reverse, so um, we rely on a pushback truck to connect up with the uh, nose wheel steering pin. And uh, it pushes us back, hence the reason for that communication with ground there. Make sure we were both on the same page. And uh, since we're going to be uh, taxiing off to our left, 
I've set the uh, pushback gauge to turn the aircraft so that it heads in that direction. And we're currently doing that turn now to put us on a heading that would match up with the direction of the taxi. Parking brake. Parking brakes are set. Prepare for taxi and signal on left side. Okay, going just to move the hand signal on left side. Okay, so normally uh, we would taxi at about 15 knots. I've reduced that down to 12 today because of the brisk winds we have, 11 knots. Uh, sometimes if you get into a tailwind, you can get into an over, not an overspeed, but uh, going faster than you would really like to be going. And by using the uh, automatic taxi control speed here, uh, it'll keep keep me in check with regards to uh, ground speed with that wind rolling at 11 knots. Now, King Salmon Airport, like most small airports, um, does not have dedicated taxiways to the runway. So uh, we do have a taxiway out to the runway, but we have to use the runway itself to get down to uh, the end of it for takeoff. So uh, you'll see that when we get out there, but uh, Normally we would have a taxiway right to the end of the runway where we uh, just pull out onto the runway and take off. In this particular situation we'll be actually taxiing down the runway itself and then making a, a 180 degree turn. Of course we always want to check to make sure that we're not coming into conflict with any other aircraft that are taking off. Even though we got clearance from air traffic control, we don't always take their word for it. You're always there on the side of caution. And there was a situation one time, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was uh, a collision between Pan Am and uh, KLM. They were obviously taxiing in poor visibility and heavy fog. And uh, air traffic control basically got confused with regards to what aircraft was where. And as a result, um, Pan Am was taking off and KLM was just uh, taxiing across the runway at the same time and they ended up colliding with each other. And of course, there was some loss of life on that flight, and our prayers go to the victims. Good news is there was a, some survivors as well, but uh, nevertheless, it was a pretty horrific uh, accident. And that's one of the reasons why we don't rely solely on the instructions of ground control. Sometimes they can make a mistake, not unheard of. And sometimes weather conditions will just simply uh, make it impossible for the tower to be able to see all the aircraft it's controlling. And they can make a mistake because of situational awareness and whatnot. At the end of the runway here, we have to make a 180 degree turn, which is not possible in this aircraft unless you use what's called differential braking, which is basically applying braking to the uh, 
side of the main landing gear in the direction you're going to be turning. By applying brake to that particular wheel and turning at the same time with a little bit more thrust than usual, you get to make the 180 degree turn. So here we are at the end of the runway. Uh, I'm going to go through some pre flight checklists here that are kind of boring, so I'm not going to amuse you with that. And I'll rejoin you once we're ready to get going. Okay, so uh, I've completed my pre flight checklist here, and uh, barometric pressure is set, and uh, landing lights are on, pass the seatbelt signs are on. The icers are on, trim is set. Now, normally I would use the uh, air, uh, autopilot to control the thrust for takeoff. In this particular situation, because I'm landing, I'm taking off at a, a relatively short runway for this aircraft, given I'm at, at maximum takeoff weight. Sorry, maximum takeoff weight. I'm going to apply full thrust with the uh, brakes engaged and that will allow the engines to spool up to full thrust before I even begin to move. And that will allow us to accelerate down the runway a little bit faster than we otherwise normally would. I'm also going to apply a little bit more thrust than I normally would. Normally I would apply 8 degrees uh, flaps, I'm sorry. Normally I would apply 8 degrees flaps. Today I'm applying 16 degree swaps and that increases the lift on the wings by creating a larger arc on the top side of the wing versus the bottom. Creates more lift. We're at full thrust, we uh, blast down the runway, hoping to get up at takeoff speed in time to lift off the ground. Again, this runway is pretty much at the limit for takeoff speed and maximum takeoff weight for this aircraft. So we're really pushing the limits of the envelope. We are airborne. Tracting the flaps and landing gear before we get into a stall situation. And you can see our airspeed over here is, is increasing. Terrain, terrain. Terrain, terrain. So we're basically on a right-hand turn here to get onto our flight plan, and you can see that in the multifunction display, uh, the blue dot here right at the bottom is our, the airport we took off from, and this purple line is our flight plan. We just need to come back around here, almost underneath the degrees, not quite, to get onto that flight plan. And 
we just retracted the flaps completely. The aircraft is now in a clean state, as it were. What pilots refer to when uh, the flaps are fully retracted, landing gears up, and nothing creating drag on the aircraft. Pilots refer to that as the air aircraft has been cleaned up. Now that we're a little bit off the ground further, we can increase our climb rate, get up to our altitude a little bit faster. We couldn't do that on initial takeoff because we would have stalled the aircraft because of the short runway. It's kind of a nail biter getting off that airport, I'll tell you. It came very close to our going over the edge. Wouldn't want to have to do it on a regular basis, I'll put it that way. But it was either this or fly all the way back to Anchorage, which was certain, certainly something I didn't want to do. Okay, so at this point we're making a left-hand turn here to uh, intersect with the flight plan. Now you can see on the uh, multifunction display here, we're pretty much on track for the flight plan, which is this purple line. The A320neo has uh, a pretty good thrust to weight ratio, even though we're taking off at maximum takeoff weight, uh, the thrust of the engines is not an issue. Climbing steady at 1500 feet per minute and maintaining airspeed at 240 knots. You can see once we get above 10,000 feet it has no trouble getting up to uh, losing speed.
coming up on 10,000 feet here. Once we get to 10,000, I'll turn off the landing lights and uh, increase our uh, indicated airspeed. Of course, there is a speed limit below 200, below uh, 10,000 feet of 250 knots, and we observe that obviously. Now that we're above 10,000 feet, we need to increase the uh, speed of the aircraft. Typically, set that at 315 knots indicated airspeed. And the aircraft will gradually increase its speed until it gets to that number. As expected, we have some pretty heavy cloud cover and some rain going on. This was expected before we left. The forecast was calling for it. Of course, once we get up for a cruising altitude, we won't have to deal with any weather other than possible thunderstorm or turbulence or something of that nature, but uh, Cessna 464, turn right heading 265 Turn right heading 265, Cessna 464 All the on 7401, climb and maintain flight level 180 Okay, so uh, initially we were assigned 12,000 feet and uh, we took off and uh, we reached that altitude and we're moving up to uh, 18,000 feet and our indicated airspeed has increased to 302 knots, so it is climbing to where we want it to be. Just made an adjustment to the uh, barometric pressure. Uh, it has changed since we took off. It was originally 29.94, and I switched that to its current 29.99 inches of mercury. Very important to keep that on uh, the correct setting, otherwise the altimeter is off a little bit. And you could be, be reporting an altitude that is not accurate. beginning to climb above the clouds here. Basically had cloud cover from about 8,500 feet up to 15,000 feet to the tank, which is a substantial thick layer of cloud cover, hence the reason for the heavy rain.
Okay, so we reached uh, 18,000 feet, and we're now climbing up to 24,000 feet. And the reason air traffic control does this, uh, instead of you know giving us our initial cruising altitude right away, they give us uh, the altitude in increments. And, uh, reason for that if you get into a situation where you're going a little bit slower than you should be you have the option of leveling out for a little while gaining some airspeed and then climbing again it's known in the aviation world as step climbing and uh, in this case we, do, we don't have to do, worry about that because there's plenty of thrust in these engines to get us up to cruising altitude without having to stop along the way some aircraft do have to do that uh, Namely, the A321-231, uh, I think it is, the IAE. Uh, it has a very lazy climbing rate, and uh, thrust and weight ratio leaves it to be desired. So, there are situations where that aircraft has to level off and gain airspeed before it can get up to its cruising altitude. So, it's not unheard of very common, although it doesn't quite bust to me, it's not an unusual practice. set our altimeter to the standard 29.92 inches of mercury which is the uh, standard setting above 18,000 feet all aircraft uh, use the same setting so that everybody's on the same page we have a full complement of passengers today uh, not every day uh, an aircraft leaves King Salmon Airport on a direct flight to Japan they normally have to travel to Anchorage first on a commuter flight and then depart Anchorage for Japan. So, uh, a lot of people took advantage of this flight and uh, the book's out. That being said, our indicated airspeed is holding at 308, which should be 315. So, we're going to reduce our climb rate a little bit here. See if we can get that up a little faster. Not critical, obviously, but uh, it indicates we're approaching our maximum climb rate. We don't want to get into a situation where the aircraft loses too much indicating airspeed, so we take care of it before it becomes a problem. Again, this is all routine stuff. Almost every airliner will run into this. As you get closer and closer to your cruising altitude, you have to decrease your rate of climb to maintain airspeed. Alpha Pod 7401. Climb and maintain flight level 280. So that basically puts us on our final climb. Level. Going from 24,000 feet up to 28,000 feet. We'll be cruising at 28,000 feet for the duration of the flight. Depending on weather conditions and uh, wind speeds and whatnot, uh, after I burn off some fuel, I'll probably uh, increase that altitude. That will be dependent basically on the outside weather. If we run into high winds or thunderstorms, I'll keep the aircraft where it is. Winds stay calm and we don't have any unforeseen weather. I'll go to a higher altitude and therefore get better fuel economy.
While we're making our final climb here, I'm just going to give you a bird's eye view of the aircraft. And, uh, by strict coincidence, pun intended, um, I've chosen Down Upon Air Airways, which is a Japanese airliner company. And, uh, this aircraft has their livery on it. Given that I was heading to Japan, I figured we'd be just kidding. And, uh, I'm going to force this to happen. It obviously wouldn't happen at this altitude in real life, but uh, when this aircraft is um, coming in for a landing in heavy weather, thick cloud cover and rain, it produces uh, vapor trails, you know, basically the wind surfaces of the aircraft condense the air so much that it uh, produces condenses it into vapor trails. I'm going to turn that on just so you can see what it looks like, but it, it would norm not normally happen at this altitude. So, if you look behind the aircraft, you can see those uh, vapor trails coming off the uh, leading edge of the uh, alien rounds. Again, obviously at this altitude, we're not going to see that normally, but I just wanted to demonstrate it to you that it will happen when we're coming in for landing. If we're in the right flying conditions, it be rain and uh, fog. And visibility, you'll see those vapor trails going. The aircraft does that automatically in the right conditions. Well, it looks like we've reached our cruising altitude. The aircraft appears to be leveling off. If indeed that is the case. I'm going to switch over to Mach speed here. Set that at Mach 0.78. If I were flying a little bit higher, about 30,000 feet, I'd probably go at Mach 0 0.80, given the fact that we have low winds today at 10 knots. We could probably get away with Mach 0 0.80, but we've had a, a healthy ground speed of 452 knots, so that puts us on track to land in Narita Airport in approximately. Five hours and 40 minutes. So obviously this is not going to be a short flight. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details of looking at cloud cover the entire way. I am going to, however, turn off the passing seatbelt sign while pastures from the cabin. Keeping the de-icers on just because of the current uh, weather below us, we don't want to run into the ice and That would have been an abundance of caution to keep that on. That being said, uh, we're going to let the uh, aircraft continue to fly, and uh, unless something changes, we're going to need a thunderstorm or something, a specific landmark that I think might be of interest to you. I'll jump in and uh, let you know where we are and what's going on. Hi, and thanks for rejoining the video. Uh, we're currently uh, flying over the Bering Sea. Uh, we're currently uh, 282 nautical miles northeast of uh, Adu, which is the most westerly point of uh, the Alaskan archipelago. Uh, anything west of that would be in Russian territory. Uh, but we're currently on a heading of uh, 235 or uh, southwest and about 2,000 nautical miles from uh, our destination which is Narita International Airport actually 1986 nautical miles to be exact our ETA is 4 hours and 10 minutes uh, the aircraft is performing well we did have some moderate turbulence a little while back, but uh, nothing too severe. And 
And uh, the weather we're seeing over the Bering Sea is typical, nothing unusual. Winds are uh, 78 degrees at 27 knots, and that is slightly increasing, but nothing too severe. Ground speed is 484 knots. We're cruising at Mach 0.78, although that should be Mach 0.80. We just hit a pocket there that slow us down a little bit. And our indicated airspeed is 295 knots. All systems are functioning normally, and so far it's been a relatively uneventful flight. So, uh, with that, I'll uh, keep the aircraft flying, and uh, unless we run into anything unusual, I'll uh, check back with you in a little bit. I think we're rejoining our video. Uh, we're currently approaching uh, the most westerly island in the uh, Alaskan Archipelago. And uh, once we cross this island, over this island, and uh, we can have the south side, but we'll be into the Pacific Ocean with this very city. Uh, the island in question, of course, is uh, up here. The island of uh, has a airport on it called Casco Cove. Pretty remote island. I don't know if it even has a name, but uh, it is the most westerly island in the uh, Alaskan Archipelago. Looks like there is a naval air base down there, but obviously. Uh, strategic location given its proximity to the Russian border and still within U.S. airspace. So once we pass over this island, we will be officially in the Pacific Ocean versus the Bering Sea where we've been since we took out. are currently 28 nautical miles northwest of that island. And we will be looking at three and a half hours flying time to Narita International in Tokyo, Japan, with a range of uh, 1,707 nautical miles. Currently cruising at Mach 0 0.80, ground speed 494 knots, and uh, indicated airspeed 301 knots. The aircraft is uh, performing normally, no anomalies, very good weather. No uh, turbulence whatsoever. Now, I can tell you from my own experience that once we uh, get south of uh, the Alaskan Archipelago and head into Pacific waters, uh, it's not unusual to encounter some pretty strong winds blowing off of, uh, off of Russia. We may have to reduce speed or altitude uh, once we're trying to go with winds. I'll be keeping an eye on things and uh, obviously take any necessary actions we need to take. But uh, right now, as you can see, we're flying over Westerly Island of the Alaskan Archipelago. Another three and a half hours flying to find you. So with that, we'll continue on flying, and if anything changes, we'll pop in and let you know. So far, everything is going routine.
Hi, just uh, checking in with you to bring you an update on where we are and the status of the uh, aircraft. We're currently approximately 300 nautical miles from uh, Japan's airspace. And uh, we're looking at about 1,365 nautical miles to uh, Narita Airport in Tokyo with an ETA of 2 hours and 49 minutes currently cruising at 32,000 feet speed is Mach 0 0.80 ground speed is 476 knots indicated airspeed 301 knots winds outside are 356 or almost due north at 9 knots which uh, is a tailwind albeit not much of one weather outside is uh, mostly cloudy with some mild turbulence and uh, this is not unusual weather for this part of the world Get the winds coming off the uh, Russian planes, wide open space for miles, coming in contact with the uh, colder waters of the North Pacific Ocean, creates connection. I'm actually quite surprised that we didn't have stronger winds yet. We may yet All systems are working normally, um, nothing to report. Uh, outside air temperature at this altitude is uh, minus, 4 degree, minus 44 degrees Celsius, sorry. And uh, if we were below 18,000 feet, the barometric pressure would be 30.12 inches of mercury. Of course, flying above 18,000 feet, we're on the standard 29.92 inches mercury. So uh, that's the report, and uh, nothing really uh, striving and happening. Very smooth flight so far. Hopefully, it stays this way right into uh, Japan. With that, we'll pick it up a little bit later on with the status report. Hi, once again, uh, we're just checking in on our uh, flight to uh, Tokyo, and uh, winds have picked up significantly as we approach the uh, main island of uh, Japan. Currently 763 nautical miles from uh, Narita International, and uh, Approximately 389 nautical miles, uh, almost due east of uh, Shiro. Winds right now are 297 at 102 knots. I reduced the airspeed down to Mach 0.78 as a precaution. And uh, it is having an impact on our ground speed, which is dropped significantly down to 411 knots. So with that being said, I'm going to take the aircraft down lower and see if we can get into some calmer winds. Hopefully that will uh, speed up the trip because if we stay where we're at, we're going to be uh, losing time. I'll get back to you when we uh, get to our new cruising altitude and uh, hopefully we the wind will be a lot less stronger. Okay, so just to bring up a speed here, we're, uh, we've descended from uh, 32,000 feet, we're now at 26,000 feet. I've reduced the airspeed to Mach 0.75 owing to the denser air at this altitude. 
Our ground speed is 418 knots, uh, which is a slight improvement on where we were. And uh, weather outside is uh, a little great where we're at right now, but not too bad. But it looks like we could see some thunderstorms ahead. The weather is starting to show some puffy cumulus clouds, and there might be a thunderhead out to our left there. So we could be in for a rough ride here ahead. Current location is uh, 588 nautical miles from Narita International in Tokyo. Flying time is approximately 1 hour and 20 minutes. And uh, everything is working fantastic. The engines are performing well. Now we've used, uh, we are seeing now some lightning on the, uh, collecting up the wings in the left wing there, so uh, it looks like we're in for a rough ride ahead. We're going to be keeping an eye on things here and uh, dodging these thunderstorms a little bit. We can get past them anyway. Hopefully we don't hang around for too long. Looking at the sky outside, I'm going to make a slight course adjustment here. Turning right to heading 255. And that should take us away from those thunderstorms that are off to our left get us into some smoother air. We are picking up some substantial uh, turbulence right now and we just got a icing sign on our instrument display. Oh yeah. Indicated airspeed indicator showing zero which indicates that the uh, veto has frozen over. Although we have feet hoodies on, I am going to turn the engine the icers on. And we got our uh, indicated airspeed back. So this is the type of thing that you run into when you get into these thunderstorms. Uh, end up with a lot of icing conditions and uh, it can throw everything out of kilter because we don't have an indicated airspeed showing on the primary function display. The autopilot thinks you're not moving and increases the thrust accordingly as you try to get you moving. And that results in your aircraft get going faster than you want it to be. To correct that, I turned off the auto throttle and uh, throttle back the engines to idle. As soon as the uh, Pito cleared itself of ice, the uh, IS, IAS uh, indicator here came back to life and uh, we put everything back to what the, the way it was. We're currently at 0.75 again. That we have gotten into some smooth air air now, it's not quite as uh, fancy as it was. But a pretty significant thunderstorm off to our right, but it's far enough away, I don't think it'll influence us at all. But once we get out around this thunderstorm on our left, we we'll make a gradual left hand turn to get us back on our flight plan. Call the phone 7401. Turn left heading 210. Turn left heading 210. Down the pond 7401. Air traffic control has caught on that we're a little bit off course. So to keep them happy, we're going to make a slight left turn here, but not going right back onto the flight plan because we still have that center so I'm not to our left there. But to just to the right of the thunderstorm and uh, 
try to keep that as a jury bones if we can. Once we get past that storm, it, if uh, everything's looking good, we'll uh, get back on our course. Pretty significant thunderstorm off to our right there, but uh, again, it's kind of off in the distance and uh, that's right. We're getting some pretty severe tur turbulence now. The difficult thing about decisions like this is we have to be back on our flight plan in, in order to make our next waypoint. We're currently uh, 41 and a half nautical miles away. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get past the thunderstorm in time to uh, make that waypoint. You can see the lightning reflecting off the uh, wind there. As soon as we get past this thunderstorm, the paratype control can read that long. If we stay off course too long, then we'll cancel our flight plan and uh, we'll have to find a new one, which is kind of a pain. Hold the phone, 7401. Please think about your turn to heading to 10. Ground speed has increased. Uh, we're up to 421 All knots ground speed now. Please think about your turn to heading to one zero. Which is a good okay. thing. Gotta get past this thunderstorm on our left, and I think we'll be able to get back on course. Assuming we don't miss a waypoint along the way. Just to think, make them think I'm going back on course here. I'm going to make a course adjustment to 210. But uh, if we get into a situation where we get into some heavy turbulence, I'll have to turn to the right again. Winds have uh, dropped off a little bit. Uh, we're at uh, 277 degrees at 80 knots. So pretty high wind, but uh, down from the uh, over 100 knots we had earlier. Pretty much as close as I'd want to come to that tunnel shop. I don't want to be any closer to this. So that worked out pretty good. We got uh, back on our flight plan without getting too close to that time in front. On the phone, 7401. Did you hear my last transmission? Turn right heading 240. Proceed on course. On the phone, 7401.
we got a big guy coming up on our right here. Just a significantly sized thunderstorm. We're only seven and a half nautical miles from uh, that waypoint, Oxhead. And it looks like we're going to be threading the needle between two storms here. We have one developing up to our, just to our left, and uh, another one off to our right. The one off to our right is, seems to be closer to us than the one just off our center line to the left. When you're flying in this type of weather, it's uh, somewhat unpredictable. Sometimes a, a thunderstorm will pop up and then it will quickly dissipate before you even get to it. And that appears to be happening with the thunderstorm we had just to the left of center here. Of course, we still have some low level lightning going on, but uh, no, no major thunderhead. And that might work to our advantage because it will allow us to stay on course. Unfortunately, because of these thunderstorms, we lost some ground speed. Uh, ground speed is down to 391 knots now, which is extremely low. We want to be able to get that a little bit higher if we can. Unfortunately, I'm in a bit of a catch-22 here because if I fly higher, get into higher winds. If I fly lower, my ground speed's not going to be as fast. Given the conditions, I'm going to go with an increasing altitude. I'm just going to turn on the uh, fast and see cross sign here because of the turbulence we're experiencing. I don't want anybody to get injured. We still have 17,640 pounds of fuel left. So that should be more than enough to get us into the arena. There's a thunderstorm off to our left there that's causing a bit of turbulence, so uh, I'm just going to go 10 degrees off from our course and hope 
Hopefully that'll get us away from some of the turbulence. And now the area of the disturbed weather off to our right here is exactly off to our right, actually 90 degrees to our right. I think we'll be past that by the time we uh, get any closer to it. This is what piloting an aircraft is like in the thunderstorms. It's a measure of maneuvering between the thunderstorms. Of course, if you're on the ground, you wouldn't see this because uh, it would be basically overcast and you would see the aircraft and see what it's doing. That's the reason why you never ever see an aircraft in the air zigzagging. It's only done during thunderstorms and if you already got a thunderstorm going on, you're not going to see any aircraft in the sky. The winds have significantly picked up. We're at 131 knots uh, at uh, 273 degrees. Which is a hurricane force wind at this point. If you look at the wings, the wings do flex with the wind, and uh, they're designed to do that and to help stabilize the aircraft a little bit. about as bumpy as it ever gets on a A320. It doesn't get much worse than this. Nothing we're not used to, mind you, but given a choice, I'd rather not be in it. Okay, so we're past that thunderstorm on our left now. Uh, I'm sorry, a left hand turn back on our flight plan. Usually we got about uh, 10 or 15 nautical miles leeway on our flight plan before aircraft control uh, starts telling us to correct it. Picking up just a little bit of turbulence out that thunderstorm about before it left. The left wing is being hooked by some downdrafts and producing some turbulence. Good news, it, it looks at least right now like we're getting out of this weather. And I'm in it too soon. Guys appear to be improving. Because of the uh, higher wind at this altitude, uh, didn't gain much of ground speed. We're at 388 knots, which is very slow. So that being said, we're going to take her down. So we can conserve some fuel here. Tokyo Center, Alma Pond, 7401, request flight level 240. Alma Pond, 7401, descend and maintain flight level 240. Descend and maintain flight level 240. So we're currently descending from 30,000 feet down to 24,000 and uh, I'm hoping by the time we get down to 24,000 we'll be underneath those winds. Uh, winds usually uh, are in layers in the atmosphere and you can have 
a layer of extremely high wind and then calm winds above it and calm winds below it. And uh, that's most likely what we're seeing here. I could have gotten higher and possibly gotten above the high winds, but uh, we have flying higher birds more fuel and really something we don't want to burn too much of on this trip because it's close to the uh, maximum range of this aircraft so of course had we had fair of weather the entire way it would have been well within the range of this aircraft but unfortunately that was not the case. Turbulence has really settled down a little bit now. We're not bouncing uh, around as much. It's a good thing. And it looks like we're getting out of the uh, under the thunderstorms. At least right now it does anyway. They could pop up again. By descending to 24,000 feet, I'm hoping to get that ground speed up. We're extremely slow on ground speed going to the high winds where the winds are 276 degrees at 110 knots. Actually technically 111 knots, but it's a very strong wind. Hurricane force. One more of the area of thunderstorms developing out to our left here. Looks like we're going to have one more round of thunderstorms before this is over. We are closing in on the Rita International and all uh, this. Uh, we're currently 439.7 nautical miles from the Rita. And that's just under an hour of flying time. So that being said, we're uh, almost at uh, flight level 240, uh, 0.72 is our set speed. The ground speed, unfortunately, is a little bit on the low side, 372 knots. The winds are 276 degrees at uh, 87 knots. So. I'm going to leave it at that for now, and uh, I'll be back with you when we uh, get close enough for a approach to the Rita Internet. Okay, so a little update here. We're currently flying at 28,000 feet, uh, Mach 0.78. Ground speed is a relatively low, 388 knots. Uh, the winds are 254 degrees at 85 knots. And we're currently 188 nautical miles from uh, Narita International Airport. And we are in range of the VOR for that airport. So we get, we're closing in on final approach to landing here. Uh, we just recently passed through some pretty significant thunderstorms. And uh, I do a lot of navigation to get around those. 
can see them in that left rear uh, cabin view there. But the weather ahead looks pretty smoother. I think we're going to have a good approach into uh, Tokyo today. I'm going to give you a bird's eye view here of the uh, aircraft. Currently flying at 28,000 feet and we have a thunderstorm off to our right. It's far enough away, it's not going to be an influence on the aircraft at all. And, uh, you can see some of those thunderstorms that we passed through before it came back on. I have to say, for a twin-engine jet, uh, this aircraft is phenomenally fuel efficient. Actually, blows my mind how fuel efficient it is. And given its size, I mean, it's around the same size as the 737, and able to fly from King Sam, Alaska, to Tokyo, Japan. That's quite a feat. And we're currently looking at 12,880 pounds remaining of fuel, so lots of fuel yet. If we wanted to, we could almost keep going into uh, Hiroshima or Nagasaki, which is in the southern part of the main island of Japan. Just going to keep the simulation running here and uh, wait for uh, communications with Tokyo. Tokyo Center, Alma Pond, seven. Just going to check in with them now. Alma Pond, seven four zero one. Tokyo Center, Roger. So we're just waiting now for instructions to begin our descent to landing. That shouldn't be too far off, 163 nautical miles from the airport.
Okay, so we've begun our descent into uh, Narita International. We're currently descending to 20,000 feet. Uh, set it at a rate of 1,500 feet per minute. I've uh, decreased our indicated airspeed on the autopilot to 230 knots. That basically will keep the engines at idle until we get down to that altitude. Currently 85 nautical miles from the airport. Currently looking at about 15 minutes away. I'm just going to let the aircraft go and do its thing here and uh, keep you updated on any changes. Bond 7 4 0 1 
Okay, so we've reached 20,000 feet and we're going to continue our descent on down to 8,000 feet. Looks like we're going to be flying into some pretty heavy cloud cover and lower elevations here. Could be an interesting landing in uh, Narita today with the low cloud cover and lightning in an area. You never know what you're going to run into. So we've been signed runway 16 left. Um, I'm going to put the frequency in here is 110.7 megahertz. That's the ILS frequency. We're going to switch off the GPS at this point, switch over to navigational mode, and set our course at 160, the direction of the runway. Below 18,000 feet at this point, so I'm going to set the barometric pressure. Okay, it's currently at 29.63 inches of mercury. Okay, Just keeping an eye on my airspeed there is creeping up a little bit, so I'm going to watch that closely. We have 244 knots indicated airspeed. Of course, there is a, a speed limit below 10,000 feet of 250, so if we get too fast here, we could end up exceeding that. Just on the uh, private radio with the Reed International Airport Tower, and uh, they're stating that they have been experiencing some thunderstorms all day, so uh, there are some Center, thunderstorms Center, in the Center, area as well. It's going to be an exciting Niner, landing by the sound of it.
you see a little flash of lightning there ahead of us indicate a low level thunderstorm doesn't seem to be reaching very high but thunder lightning nevertheless Basically, uh, just to give you a heads up as to what's going on here, we're going to be coming in uh, passing the airport on the westerly track, and then we're going to make a left hand turn into runway 16, which is southeast. We're going to be doing the typical zigzag maneuver that we always do when we come in for landing. Pretty good thunderstorm out to our forward left there. And that's exactly where the airport would be, so not looking good. Turning on the landing lights here, uh, seatbelt signs were already sign uh, turned on from the turbulence earlier. And we'll fly that level at 8,000 feet. Ground speed is 250 knots. Indicated airspeed is 230 knots. Wind is 248 at 7 knots. 33.5 nautical miles from the airport. Now looking at our uh, multifunction display here, this arrow here points towards the airport and this is our runway heading. Obviously, as we fly on this heading, we'll fly past the VOR, and as a result, this will move down. Once it gets down to around here, we'll make a left hand turn and uh, get on our vectors for final. Pretty intense lightning going on to the left of us here. Good high thunderhead. see from the VOR that is the direction of the airport so it'll be an interesting landing. This aircraft is designed for landing in bad weather so it's not an issue as far as getting into an arena goes. We will land 
provided we don't get waved off due to other traffic or something like that. But, uh, the aircraft has very sophisticated avionics and uh, tracks the ILS system very well. In fact, uh, Airbus has recently gone through a complete revamp of the avionics and all their aircraft switching over from CRT display to LCD display. You can see the ILS system just became active we got the localizer. We don't have the glide scope yet, but we'll pick that up as we get closer. It's approaching the uh, east coast of Japan now. You can see land uh, off to our forward right. All net on 7401, acknowledge last transmission. Turn right heading 325, now net on 7401. All net on 7401, turn left heading 295. All net on 7, 4, 0, 1, descend and maintain 1,800. Okay, so we're going to descend uh, from uh, 8,000 down to uh, 1,800 feet. All net on 7, 4, 0, 1, acknowledge last transmission. Descend and maintain The reason for that low altitude is... Uh, Probably due to poor visibility and heavy rain and clouds, however, some fog in the area. Usually any time you're coming in in bad weather like this, we they assign us a very low altitude. Not in the ordinary.
through the lightning is getting pretty intense here as we descend into lower altitude. We get a little bit high on the speed there as well, so I'm going to back that out to 210 knots indicated airspeed. Now I'm going to drop the wheels here just to create some drag. I should keep her in check below 250 knots. We've got three green on the landing gear, meaning all three wheels are down. Tokyo on approach, American Pacific 8473 is out of 11,300 for 9,000. American Pacific 8473, Tokyo on approach, Roger. We're currently flying at a 90 degree angle to the front direction of the runway. So I'm expecting once we get down to the lower altitude here, uh, we'll have to make a left hand turn on I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of the aircraft in uh, descent here. And I've just extend, extended the leading edge of the wing flaps. They call it Luger flaps. On the on 7, 4, 0, 1, you are 2, 1 miles north, turn left, heading 185, descend and maintain 1,000. 2,500. Left approach. Maintain 1,800 until established on the localizer. Contact Narita Tower on 118.2. Landmark 511. Contact Tokyo approach on 119.1. Okay, so we just got our vector to final. Landmark 511. Turn left, heading 185. Descend and maintain 1,800. I'm going to switch over to ILS view here on the multi-function display so we can see it in our I've got the ILS engaged. Pretty good chain lightning going on there. Narita Tower, Elmapon 7401 is one niner miles north. Inbound ILS, runway 16 left approach. Of course, as the uh, airspeed decreases, I'm also increasing flaps to keep up with it. Currently at full flaps. I've just armed the uh, spoilers so they will automatically just deploy on landing. You can see the flaps are down. And we're slowing down here to 160 knots and we're going to decrease that a little bit further to 155. Quick bird's eye view here in the aircraft coming in for landing. Typical uh, attitude, the nose is up just a little touch from the uh, main landing gear, which is exactly where we want it to be. And you can see the flaps are down and the trailing engine wings. No sign of the runway yet, but Expected. Given the weather conditions,
wind is currently died down substantially it's uh, 160 at uh, 6 knots which means a, a perfect headwind assuming that stays where it's at perfect headwind being ideal landing conditions wind blowing straight at the nose of the aircraft we are locked on to the localizer now and we're making a left hand turn see some of the homes and buildings of uh, rural Tokyo a little bit north of the city actually but close enough to it that you uh, can see some of the houses but you see them better if the weather was better but that we don't have any control over Uh, you'll see the uh, glide scope is coming down here. This gives us a perfect uh, descent to the runway. And this ensures that we're lined up left to right to the runway. When they meet in the middle of, on the crosshair, that's when we begin our descent. That has happened. So we're coming in on final descent now into N Narita International Airport in Tokyo, Japan. All Nippon 7401 clear to land, runway 16 left, clear to land, runway 16 left, All Nippon 7401. Picking up a little bit of light turbulence and rain here. Nothing too significant, but... Uh, One thousand. Never fun to have turbulence when you're coming in on your final approach to landing. Five hundred. Four hundred. Turbulence has decreased substantially now. Three hundred. Two hundred. Minimums. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And we touch down right in the uh, crux part of the runway. Find the reverse thrusters now. Spoilers are deployed. Brakes. All Nippon 7401, exit runway when able. All Nippon 7401, contact ground on 121.85. One two one point eight five for Alma Pond seven four zero one. Taxi tap round Alma Pond seven four zero one. Taxi to the gate. 
Again, we're using the uh, pushback taxi gauge here to control our airspeed while we're on the ground. Uh, the aircraft is pretty light right now. It's only 9,900 pounds of fuel remaining. I've retracted the flaps. The spoilers are retracted. Turn off the landing lights. The scenery you ha we have here for uh, Narita is custom scenery, it's not the default. I've upgraded that. Bring it up to modern uh, specifications, if you will, the way Narita looks today. This is a major airport servicing a lot of aircraft flying from Asia over to North America. Very busy airport. A lot of flights in and out of here. It handles every type of aircraft right from an A380 down to a Cessna. Got two runways. Uh, runway uh, one six left and right, and uh, runway three four left and right. Of course, uh, the wind determines which direction the aircraft would be coming in for landing. Up. If you had a uh, northwesterly wind. Then you would probably come in on runway 34. Southeasterly wind, we would be coming in on runway 16. And sometimes at an airport of this size, it's not unusual to have two airport air aircraft coming in at the same time, one landing on 16 left and the other one landing on 16 right. That's not unheard of at all. Narita Ground, American Pacific 8473, request taxi to the gate. American Pacific 8473, taxi to the gate, 9 7, using taxiway Alpha 4 Alpha, Papa 5 Oscar, Delta, Hotel, Romeo, Golf. Taxiing to gate 9 7, using taxiway Alpha 4 Alpha, Papa 5 Oscar, Delta, Hotel, Romeo, Golf, American Pacific 8473. Looks like a Boeing 777 ahead of us there. In the uh, orange livery. This airport actually has new uh, terminals that they recently built to uh, specifically accommodate the Airbus A380 aircraft going to its height above ground compared to other aircraft it has that have uh, specific uh, terminal Requirements, and this airport 
does have those requirements. Since we landed on the uh, north side of the, of the uh, airport, and being a medium medium range aircraft, believe it or not, and then the trip we just finished, uh, we're going to be uh, parking on the uh, south side of the airport terminal, which means a long taxi for us, but longer than if we had to come in on runway one six right. One thing this airport does have is uh, the uh, gangway that comes out to meet the aircraft uh, has the ability to be lifted up or down to meet the uh, specific airport or aircraft. So, uh, although we won't be lined up directly with the gangway, they can adjust that as needed. stopped at the gate. Just going to start shutting everything down here. Engines first of course. Navigational radios, flight management computer, automatic direction finder, transponder, taxi lights, stall, beacon, wing, and navigational lights, de-icers, Fuel tank heaters, generators, avionics, fuel cross speed, seatbelt sign, and main power bus. Aircraft is now cold and dark. So uh, basically, that concludes the uh, video today. I hope you enjoyed the flight. Uh, we did have a little bit of excitement there north of J Japan, where we ran into some pretty severe weather. We were able to dodge the thunderstorms and get through it, but uh, made for some dicey flying. So, uh, that being said, appreciate any comments you might have. You can comment below. Uh, and I also keep a blog on Steemit, so... Uh, if you're a Steemit fan or if you remember Steemit, appreciate an upvote on Steemit. Keeps the uh, production of these videos going for those that enjoy them. The goal here is basically to give you an idea of what it's like to fly, to be a pilot, and what's involved in it. And uh, I realize I use a lot of acronyms and. and take for granted that you know what they are, but uh, I'm doing it in a way that a pilot would do it, and gives you an idea of what's involved in handling a commercial airliner. So with that being said, we'll bid you adieu, and uh, hope you uh, have a pleasant day.